welcome to the course design practice. In lecture module 26 and 27, you have already learned about what are the properties involved in a selection of a material. Now in the module 28 and 29, you will learn what are the steps involved in a selection of a material. I will continue to discuss about material selection in engineering design. Okay. Uh, uh, for selection of a any material, it has a uh, any material has a lot of attributes. That attributes you can say that density, strength, cost, resistance to wear, resi uh, resistance to um, corrosion, so forth. So, so for, for a, uh, a design demands a certain profile of these things. For example, a low density material, a higher uh, that, that material should be a lower density and higher strength and cost will be should be modest at a modest price. Okay. So, um, here for a designing of a, any engineering component, it has a it depends on various various components, sub components that is called function, selection of material, choosing of manufacturing process, specifying a shape. And these uh, all attributes are cross linked interlinked to each other ok. Function. So, for selection of any material it starts with a func function. What is the function? What is the function? It means suppose that if you want to make a frame of a cycle ok. So, what will be the function of that frame ok. Accordingly, so, this function of that frame will influence the selection of material ok. And after that suppose that you, uh, you we know that frame of any cycle it carries a load, load of a person or anything ok. So, accordingly so that for uh, we have to keep in mind load, load carrying capability. So, that is the main function of your object. So, we uh, you will have to choose accordingly material of because every uh, each material cannot support the load requirement. That means, we can say that function influence the selection of material. Again, now after selection of material, what happens? It influences the manufacturing process. Suppose that you select selected a uh, aluminum for frame, it possesses lighter in weight and higher strength ok. So, for fabrication of frame which is to be made of aluminum what will be the appropriate manufacturing process and process are lot of process are there manufacturing process are there suppose that casting and it is sub classification of casting is sand casting, metal casting etcetera. For again another another process is machining, machining is, is done by turning operation another operation you can say milling, joining for example, welding and welding has a several types suppose that arc, arc welding, gas welding etcetera. So, to fabricate a aluminum frame of for a cycle you will have to choose appropriate manufacturing process. Again this process influences the shape means suppose that shape of a frame can be of various type this type 
or you can say this type. So, now this particular shape may be may not be possible to fabricate uh, in uh, by um, each process. Okay. So, you will have to select appropriate everything. So, again this completes the of all four components function of your uh, component selection of material and pro manufacturing process and shape. This combining these things you can select appropriate I, or you can say you can select or fabricate with appropriate material and shape. So, in this course I will focus only on the selection of material although uh, these other parameters are also necessary for a design of an engineering component, but I will focus only on selection of material. So, question is that how do we select the appropriate material for a given part and this is very important question because we have a variety of materials. in market each materials has a specific property and cost of materials are very ok. So, by keeping these points the selection of material is not easy. Material selection is a step in the process of designing any physical object. Okay. Suppose that you are designing of, of a pen. So, first step will be how after function what will be function of pen first question then after deciding the function of pen what will be <coughs> material used in fabrication of pen mm. okay. and you will have to keep in mind cost, availability functionality and properties like mechanical, physical etcetera. So, metal selection is a very crucial step in a process of designing of any physical object. I am going to take uh, explain metal selection by choosing a using a one case, case study. Suppose that we are we want to make a device to open a 
corked bottle. This is the wine bottle and cork is placed on the top. So, these are the various possible ways to open the cork. First, what are the process? Axial traction, you are going to pull the cork to open the bottle. Second thing is to remove it by sheer traction, suppose that you are applying something here one force, so that it will get and if you will pull here, so that your cork will, bottle will get opened. Third one is to push out from below, if you are applying a one uh, force from bottom side, then also it may take out from the bottle. Third one is by pulverize it, so it is very time consuming and not a good idea and to bypass it altogether by knocking the no <coughs> neck of the bottle. Ah, this is the worst idea we can think of because the things inside the bottle may be very costly or very precious thing for a moment. So, you cannot uh, you, you cannot break the bottle from the neck and to get that liquid. Okay. So, I am taking only three uh, way of to open the bottle, they are the and possible way to open that bottle working principle. Suppose that if you want to open from by pulling the cork, so what you can do? You just you will put a screw here okay, and it will uh, up to the cork's bottom portion and then you will pull it, so that cork will get <coughs> removed. Second one, you will make an arrangement so that it will, it will like a uh, just like a yeah, hollow thin tube and this portion will get inserted into cork and then after you will pull it so that cork will get removed from the bottle and third portion is that you will make a hydraulic pressure kind of uh, piston cylinder arrangement that is called arrangement to apply a force from the bottom side, so that cork will come out from the bottle. Okay. But the embodiment of the figure identify the functional requirement of each component of the device, which might be expressed in statements like a cheap screw to transmit a prescribed load to the cork. Okay. It means your attributes for the designing of to opener, what is the cheap screw? It means cost. Second is a light lever to carry a prescribed bending moment, means light in weight. A slender elastic blade that will not buckle when driven between the cork and bottleneck means that is the mechanical property and a thin hollow needle is stiff and strong enough to penetrate a cork again it is a mechanical property. So, these are the your design, design attributes. to make a <coughs> cork opener. Okay. So, here what we can do that for previous one to make axial pull, this may be a possible way to open the cork. So, here what how it is made? one dumbbell shape handle and at center there is a screw
and it will go through the cork first there will be you can um, handmade you can apply compressive low force on a screw uh, handle so that a screw will get injected into the cork then you just it will rotate and make a pull so that it will get open second thing the other three used <coughs> that is the levered pull you can uh, that is the gear levered pull either you can apply a make a lever arrangement so that that will that portion will get fixed at uh, at top portion top bottom uh, top corner portion of the cork and then you will apply a force so that due to the torque it will get removed third one is the geared pull here there is a gear arrangement so that when you will rotate handle so due to this arrangement what will happen this gear one will rotate and it it will transmit power to that gear and it will help you to get remove that cork from the bottle and fourth portion is spring assisted pull spring assisted pull is <coughs> means you are applying a force so that due to the uh, spring force they are the two springs s1 and s2 <coughs> what will happen there will be a compressive load will apply and it will after rotating that uh, handle so that it will get open so you can see that there are four possible way to make a cork opener either you can use a direct pull either you use a geared pull either you use a spring or a geared pull a spring assisted pull so direct pull so they are the four way to open bottle now after deciding the best option of cork opener what you will think now material what will be the material of each component so again then material selection comes into the picture so here are the some properties of the materials so the first general property of metal i will talk about metal so common metals are steel aluminum cast iron magnesium zinc copper lead etc these things uh, these materials can be used to make your cork opener okay and these pro these materials have a specific pro uh, several properties high electrical conductivity high heat conductivity ductile ela easily deformed high thermal shock resistance suitable for structural and load bearing application alloy utilized for development of high performance metal so there are a variety of properties for the these kind of metals but to uh, select a particular material uh, material what you will have to look uh, look into these things suppose that you are making a handle cork handle okay so and you, there will be you will use your hand to may uh, make it rotate clockwise or either or anti clockwise so this property is not required they are uh, non uh, irrelevant property okay but yeah ductile so this is also not required okay so appropriate uh, accordingly your door uh, according to your functionality you can select your uh, material second property of ceramics they are the common ceramics are available uh, we have bricks glass refractory and abrasive ceramics and these materials have a several properties low electrical conductivity low heat conductivity brittle in nature ceramics are very brittle you know <coughs> okay. 
very high brittleness you can say. High wear resistance in high tem temperature application, corrosion resistance generally used as insulator and load bearing structure and biocompatible materials. And property of polymers, common polymers are elastomers, <coughs> we have uh, discussed in earlier modules, plastics, adhesive, plastic and they are produced by polymerization of organic molecules into large molecule structure and it contains oxygen, uh, nitrogen, hydrogen, these elements are present in polymers. Okay. Low electrical conductivity, low thermal resistance, low strength, lighter material, but yeah, uh, strength of polymers are lower compared to metal or ceramics, but in a particular part st strength may not be <coughs> important criteria. So, but <coughs> so strength may not be important criteria. So, that uh, at, at those places we can choose polymer. for fabrication of those parts, but yeah, uh, we have a variety of polymers which now we have a variety like Altem, Polycarbonate, they are the very very higher strength, uh, uh, um, they have a very high strength material and it is used in various industries such like aeronautical, aeronautical again in a motorbike fabrication automobile etcetera. Uh, other materials are composites, composites are made of two or more materials. Okay. In from the past several decades, the significant Im research has been made in area of composites, because by if you are suppose that um, one parent material. may not voyage all the properties you required. So, if you will mix another material with this uh, uh, first material. So, that is, that is the composite, composite, you will make a composite so that your goal will get uh, achieved because after making composite, the property of hybrid material will be higher than the, your parent material. Okay. So, these materials are carb, uh, for example, carbon fiber reinforced polymer, polymer fiber reinforced HA and these poly, uh, composites have a lighter in weight, very strong, high fracture toughness, high thermal shock resistance and uh, uh, so on. So, so, you can see that from uh, this slide, there are metal, ceramic, polymer, composites and each uh, material have variety of proper, um, uh, properties. So, you will have to, um, uh, you will get confused when you will get going to select um, your material basis on only properties of the material. Okay. So, you will have to think beyond of this. So, basic steps in material selection process. Now, uh, we will discuss how we will select material and in a step wise manner. Okay. First step is a translation 
translation is it express design requirements as constraint and objective means first it you will have to define function and objective of your design that is the translation second step is screening so screening because you have a variety of materials in your stock so they eliminate materials that can't do the job suppose that if you are making a electrical uh, electric insulator uh, product so you can't use metal you can't use cast iron so this material you can easily you can eliminate this kind of thing, material you can easily eliminate on basis of your requirement then ranking after elimination of some material there will be also uh, still there will be few materials we now we will have to rank them find material that best do the job suppose that and uh, you after screening you have a 1,2,3,4 materials and these all materials can fulfill your requirement. Then it is, it is very confused situation which material I am going to select. Okay. So, there is a way to how can select based out of 4 material. So, that is the ranking and fourth, fourth steps is supporting info. Okay, after selection of your material, you just compare this uh, material properties and, your, uh, and uh, uh, with re respect to your requirement in handbooks, expert systems, web page, journals, etc. So, that to confirm whether you have selected right material or not. Okay. First, uh, uh, in steps in material selection process, first I will discuss translation process. Okay. In a translation, translation translate design requirements. First, you define what are the what are the your requirements to design anything. Okay. First, you will have to decide your requirements and function of that product which is which are you uh, which you are going to design okay so in uh, for translating the design requirements there are four parameters that is the function objective constraint and free variable okay function it means what does the component do to define the function of product again objective what essential condition must be made okay for example <coughs> if you are making a cycle frame so the main function of this frame is to carrying a load so you will have to essential what will be the essential condition to carry a load up to suppose that 100 kg okay now what is to be maximized or minimized constraint what is the constraint you have because in a real value problem always there will be constraint with your objective okay so within the you, you in a constant environment you will have to optimize the your objective function and fourth one is free variable <coughs> this is the identify which design variable are free free variable means the other very independent variables and each uh, you can uh, it, it does it um, does not affect your <coughs> selection process so that suppose that if you um, uh, it, it does not affect the material selection process 
but it helps in flexion. <coughs> okay. So, we have a four parameters function, objective, constraint and free variable to translate design requirements. Okay. So, I am going to uh, e explain translation using one example. Okay. We are going to select a material for a light and strong tie rod. Okay. There is a rod of length L and <coughs> the uh, cylindrical tie rod of specified length L to carry a tensile force F without failure. Okay. This is the and it is to be a minimum mass. Okay. These are the requirements of your problem. Okay. Function, what is the function of this rod? Tie rod to withstand an axial tensile rod of F. Here, problem statement you can see that specified length L to carry a tensile force F. <laughs> Objective to minimize the mass of the tie rod because it is to be of minimum mass. So, you will we have to minimize the mass of the tie rod that is the objective you will have to keep in the mind. Fourth one is constraint. Constraint L is specified means the length of tie rod is fixed. You cannot change the length of your tie rod. Then second way must not yield under axial tensile load F. It means you will have to design tie rod such that it can carry a load and sustain it, its shape and size and it so that failure will not occur <coughs> that is the constraint. Now, free variable, free variable is the cross sectional area okay. because in problem statement cross sectional area is not mentioned. It means you can choose uh, any uh, dimension of cross sectional uh, cross section of your tie rod and material you can choose any material. Okay. Now, that is the material any, but using uh, within a, this environment from uh, objective of minimizing the mass of the tie rod and this constraint, how uh, which material will be good that is the we will have to decide. So, mass of the tie rod, what will be the mass of the tie rod? Mass is a density into length into cross sectional area. Density its unit is kilogram per meter cube, it is a material property. Okay. L is the length of your tie rod and A is the cross sectional area of <coughs> your tie rod. Okay. So, from this equation you can see that rho and L, rho is material property and material is suppose that for a particular material it is constant and L is also fixed. So, that only variable is A. So, M to minimizing uh, uh, the mass can be reduced by reducing the cross sectional area because M is actually proportional to area. So, if you will reduce the cross sectional area then mass of the tie rod will get reduced, but <laughs> there is a constraint. The section area must be sufficient to carry the tensile load F because would you are not going to only design the tie rod because um, here the one question is that you are applying a load also axial load F. So, suppose that if you will reduce the cross section and uh, cross section of your tie rod, so what will happen? It will get thinner and the load carrying capability capacity will get reduced. So, what is the constraint? The section area must be sufficient to carry the tensile load F that is the requiring that F by A <coughs> is lesser than or equal to sigma y. Sigma y is the yield strength of any material. We discussed earlier module what is the yield strength. Okay. So, if you reduce now eliminate free variable. So, what we are doing? We are substituting the value of cross sectional area from here a, what will be a is equal to m by rho l. So, after putting this we are getting this one f rho l by m is equal to sigma y and finally, 
this one. So, here you can see that in this expression rho is a metal property, L is fixed, F is fixed here L and fixed. So, only variable is that rho and sigma y variable. Now, our free variables are what is our free variable? Any material and the any material. So, now that means mass can be minimized by maximizing the ratio sigma y by rho. It means if we select a material such that their density is lower and strength is higher, then what will happen? The mass of will minimized. Okay. So, here what we did? We just uh, formulated our requirement and we, we converted into the what will be the uh, um, we just reduced the our uh, domain to selection of a um, for selection of material. So, uh, what is the domain our domain now? Density the material which has a high, lower density and higher strength then uh, if you will use that those materials then our uh, the mass of tie rod will get reduced. Okay. Now, this is the metal property chart. So, here our goal is to maximizing the ratio sigma y by sigma. This metal chart is proposed by Michael S. Bay and in this chart we can see that there are variety of materials and it is plotted against strength versus density on log log plot and here you can see that for suppose that if you want to select material for lower density that is suppose that we are I am going to select 0 for 0 0.1 and higher strength then what material will be good for us rigid polymer uh, this one form here variety of uh, forms are available different different um, uh, types of forms are available. So, here variety of this is the material property chart from this chart we can uh, easily select the um, groups of material that can be used for fabrication of your product. Another that is the strength versus density another plot is Young's modulus versus density. Okay. Here you can also uh, the you can formulate your problem in function of Young's modulus and uh, density. So, that you can select appropriate material using this plot. Here you can see uh, uh, for a particular suppose that density is 1 uh, you are taking 1 milligram per meter cube and for that vertical line okay. and if you are going to select higher uh, material which has a Young's modulus of 1 giga Pascal okay. then your domain will be suppose that E should be equal to 1 giga Pascal requirement is such like such, such kind of thing and density should be lower or equal to 1 milligram per uh, megagram per meter cube. Then what will be your search region? This will be your search region. So, you can see that you are you just omitted lot of materials from this chart and only now we have only group of few materials. Okay. Now, after that you can again you can do in uh, uh, you can select most appropriate material in next steps. After deciding the your requirement and your uh, defining everything objective function and uh, your constraint and uh, then after second step comes out that is the screening, screening of material. Okay. In earlier program no problem our goal was to how we will reduce the mass of tie rod 
and we concluded that it can be uh, minimized by maximizing the yield strength by density ratio. Okay. Now, uh, after uh, getting this thing, we will have to screen the material which can uh, group of materials which can satisfy our this requirement. Okay. Now, screening the starting point is the entire range of engineering materials. Earlier, we um, I showed you in very first slide in lecture uh, module 26, there are variety of materials uh, are there to fabrication process in a fabrication process. So, we cannot look every material for our fabrication of our product. Okay. Now, at this stage what we will have to do? First we will have to essential to open up channels in different direction. Okay. It means uh, if suppose that if you are going in only one direction suppose that for lighter you need lighter material. So, if you will select uh, we only keep in mind only this thing uh, material which is a very light in weight so that I can make uh, our product with this those materials. So, that is not good idea we will have to uh, you will have to consider another consider um, uh, constraint such like there are strength strength should be higher the strength property. So, that you will have to open your channels in different multi direction. So, that you can get your appropriate some material for fabrication. For example, a steel may be the best material for one design concept while a plastic is best for a different concept even though the two designs provide similar function. Okay. Means, steel and plastic the part, part made with either steel or plastic have a same functionality, but different properties. Okay. So, you will have to how you will uh, you will have to choose either plastic or steel on basis of your requirement. Okay. Now, the importance of this phase is that it creates alternatives without much regard to their feasibility. Okay. Here, you have selected only two, two three materials steel, plastic these kind of things, but still you are you have not achieved your goal because they are the different uh, this possesses different different properties. Okay. So, still they have a, they have a no feasible analysis has been done now till now. Okay. First, so there are various methods of initial screening of solution. First, rigid material and process requirement cost per unit property method, SBA method, Dergi method and uh, there are variety of, of more methods are available for is initial screening of your metal selection. First, I will discuss rigid materials and process requirements. Here, initial screening of materials can be achieved by first classifying their performance requirement into two main category. First is rigid or go no go requirement, soft or relative requirement. Okay. Rigid requirement means Suppose that if you going to make electrical insulator, so that rigid requirement is that electrical insulation, the material that should be um, electrically insulate. Okay. So, you cannot use metal and alloy. So, simply you just eliminate those materials. So, that is the rigid requirement. Your rigid requirement is that electrically non-conductive, your rigid requirement. So, you simply just eliminate metals and alloy. So, that so a some uh, significant portion of material uh, list uh, um, from a material list you just have you have eliminated using only one rigid requirements. Then the first second is soft relative requirements. Okay. Now, electrical insulator have a variety of material which poses electrical insula insulation. So, that this is the soft requirement. Now, you will have to uh, suppose that that a material a product suppose that you are going to make a product which is to be electrically non conducting and
lighter in weight with inexpensive inexpensive okay it means you have a three requirements you are going to make a product which is electrically non conducting that is the hard requirement second thing lighter in weight and fourth one is inexpensive okay so this thing cheaper materials okay so it may be variety of materials will be there in a short range of price okay suppose that material m1 has a cost 100 rupees and m2 has a cost 105 rupees m3 cost of m3 is 95 inr so and if you are going to make a product which is to be used in highly sophisticated place okay then the difference in prices is not much important as compared to this one electrically non conducting okay so here this requirement is soft or relative requirements for your this problem statement okay now second method is cost per unit property method so this method is important where cost of the material is plays significant role okay suppose that i will explain this method using one taking one example consider the case of a bar of a given length l to support a tensile force f suppose that there is a bar of length l and tensile force on both end is f the cross sectional area is a of the bar so that will be given by a is equal to f by s and where s is equal to sigma by y divided by factor of safety factor of safety is a very important term in designing of mechanical uh, um, mechanical design of material okay so suppose um, so you will have to take consider of that factor of safety it and it factor of safety it increases increase in factor of safety will increase material requirement amount of material requirement and cost so you will have to select factor of safety very intelligently for your particular product the which is to be used in a certain operation okay now the cost of the bar that is given by c dash is equal to c into m m is the mass of that bar or m we already explained in earlier slides m is equal to rho into a into l and c is the cost of the material per unit mass and rho is the density of the material okay by simplifying on simplifying this we get c rho f l by s that is the cost of the bar in the case of the tensile member the cost of unit strength c rho by s can be used for initial screening because here f and l both are the fixed condition length of bar for is fixed that is not going to be changed and f the you are applying a load that is the fixed you know that uh, product which is to be used in a particular operation where that much force will be, will be applied on that product okay so that both parameters are fixed f and l are fixed so only this term c rho by s that is going to be the main term for in a cost per unit property um, calculation okay now here material with lower co cost per unit strength are preferable 
because after all you are whatever you are going to make this is for commercial purpose or you are going to make benefit from the commercially ben benefited from the market. Okay. So, the, this thing are the very important lower cost is very important parameter in material design selection. <coughs> if an upper limit is set for the quantity C rho by S, then material satisfying the condition can be identified and used as possible candidate for more detailed analysis in the next stage of the selection. Okay. So, <coughs> what you will do? First, you will calculate cost of the um, cost of the uh, cost per unit that uh, material and then uh, uh, whatever you are you have think that our cost should be in that range suppose that x1 inr to x2 inr then material that should fall between this range you are only you can select those materials for your fabrication. Now, these are the um, substandard formulas for cost per unit property calculation using different loading condition. Suppose that there is solid cylinder in tension or compression. Solid cylinder in tension and compression means this is the cylinder, yeah, that is the in tension. I, if you are applying a load like this, that is the compression. Solid cylinder in bending. here you are applying a load, so that it will get bent. So, cost per unit strength will be this one. If you have uh, density and you know density and yield strength of your material, then you can use this formula, either you can use this formula if you have uh, Young's modulus. You can, uh, it means you can design either cost per unit strength or cost per unit stiffness, both are okay. <laughs> E is the Young's modulus. Solid cylinder in torsion, if you are applying a twisting moment here like this, then what will be cost per unit strength? Solid cylinder bar as a slender <coughs> column, solid rectangle in bending, thin wall cylinder pressure vessel. So, these are the different loading condition and cross section. The cost per unit strength as uh, well as cost per unit stiffness changes. Okay. So, I am going to explain you using this case study. Here what problem statement is that consider a structural member in the form of simply supported beam of rectangular cross section. The length of the beam is 1 meter, the width of 100 mm, the there is no restriction on the depth of the beam, means depth of the beam is the free variable. So, the beam <coughs> is subjected to a concentrated load of 20 kilo Newton which act uh, on its middle. The main design requirement is that the beam should not suffer plastic deformation as a result of load application. So, these are the requirement, the main design requirement is that what is the requirement? Beam should not suffer plastic deformation that is the constraint that is the free variable and other parameters are given. Okay. On basis of that they have this table they have calculated and found that there are 4 materials which can fulfill this criteria and candidate metal for the beam and here uh, for working stress and the 117 mega Pascal for um, ASI 1020, AISI 4140 for 222 mega Pascal and these are uh, already considered, they have considered factor of safety of 3. Okay. And specific gravity of these materials are um, 7.86, 2.7, 2.11 okay. and using this value and uh, uh, earlier formula. Mm, this one uh, because uh, the uh, solid rectangle bending this formula will be suitable for our this question c rho by s 1 by 2 that is the cost per unit for this simply supported beam rectangular cross section they have calculated for each material cost of unit for each material now you we can see that for a AISI 1020 is cost per unit is 0 0.73, this is 0 0.73, 1.69, 2.26, but yeah for all 4 material can fulfill our criteria. So, what material we will select again. So, 
the result shows that still AISI and 4140 are equally suitable and while A1, C0 and, C1 uh, uh, and epoxy both are more expensive. Okay. Now, we are again we are uh, we have eliminated two materials. So, now we uh, um, uh, reduced our uh, material um, uh, range of group of material in only two. So, then we can select either two material. Okay. Till now, uh, we have already learned about translation steps and the screening steps in its um, selection of material. Okay. Now, I am closing this module and in the next module, I will discuss uh, rest of the two steps that is involved in a selection of material. Thank you.